Okay now, we go into the fifth stage, which is detail. Um, the reason uh, we leave this till later at this stage is because if you put the detail in before you've got the form, you'll always end up with a very, very detailed image, but it will be flat. So what we're going to do is the very faint lines on the petals, the venation of the petals. So I'm going to put the lines in from top to bottom, very fine, in one go. So just bring them round like this. Don't be afraid to bring them right down and bring them from top round to the bottom. Don't go across the petal because obviously they don't work that way. The petal grows from top to bottom. So we'll just bring these round here to put this venation on. Now it's very important that in the lighter areas the lines will be lighter than in the darker areas. So if you tend to put the lines on all in one tone it will look very stylized and unnatural. So what you need to do is just lift off a little bit with your thin paint. It's the mix of Opera Rose and Windsor Red. Very thin again and just top to bottom, just put that in like that. Bring it round. But where it's very light, a lighter hand, don't press on. Just bring it round like that so that you can hardly see it but you can see it in the areas where it's darker okay so we can put that on all of the petals on the outside not on the inside because it's very rare that you see those and the venation is different on the inside to the outside of the petal it's usually much finer so we'll hardly see that but we can put these in bring those down top to bottom like that don't overdo it we don't want them to look like tram lines. We want them just to be nice, subtle venation lines. And also, we can tidy up the little bits on the sepals. There's a li the little turn up little bit on this sepal here, which um, we need to just darken just on that inside a little bit. Just tidy these up. with the, That's part of detail, all the little small components. So I need a little bit of green on here. I think it needs to be a little bit darker under that edge. We'll go back to that in just a second. And we've also got the little dead or dying, should I say, parts of the sepal. These just come out here, all part of detail. There's very few of them, but they're just the little wispy bits. Always interesting to do, actually. Very, very satisfying to do. This is why it's very tempting to put the detail in first um, because they're nice bits to do, but don't be. Put them in afterwards. We all want to do that, but uh, you learn as time goes on. They're all the little dead bits, the little dying bits that come off later. This area here and this little bit down the stem have gone. have gone slightly off. Uh, so this is where this comes into play. It's a little size two flat brush, not too harsh, quite soft. And we can just use a little bit of water and just work that back in on the edge like that. Just dry your brush as you need to or get in the paint off. You cannot do that with a round brush, but these little flat brushes work extremely well. And that's just taken that off. And there's a little bit down the stem I noticed here, which we can do as well. So we'll just take that off there. Nice and neat, so that gets rid of that. So that completes the detail. We'll let that dry. Okay, having done the uh, detail uh, and all the tidying up bits, we now move on to the last stage, which is discretionary washes. Um, we use this term because it's not always needed. If it's a small flower, um, you probably wouldn't need a discretionary wash. The reason that we apply a wash over the whole of the portrait, which is a bit daunting to people that's never seen it done before, is to bring it all together. So all the petals, they've been done in sections. We've done one, we've done another, and so on. We've left little edges to show the thickness, but they're white, and they wouldn't be white. So what we would do is wash the complete whole flower head over with a very, very thin wash of pink. And then some of the areas that are in direct light would be washed over with a little bit of transparent yellow. 
So I'm going to do that now. I'm using the number six round brush. So I'm going to mix just that little bit of pink. We've got some left, which is transparent, which is the Windsor red. Very thin indeed. If you put this on too thick, you'll kill the flower completely. You'll undo what you've done. So what I'm going to do is work completely over this, very thin wash, very accurately over everything that's there. It will also just integrate the venation that you've already put on. It will just give it that more realistic and subtle look. As I say, this is very daunting to a lot of people because they've done all this beautiful work over a long period of time and they don't, <laughs> they don't want to uh, mess it up. So I find a lot of my students, I do it for them first time. What I'm going to do now is just mix a little bit of transparent yellow, very thin again, extremely thin. I'm going to do the sepals all over. even the small ones. With a good brush, good point, you can actually do that without changing brush size. You're just putting a wash just over the sepals. And it'll just give them a nice lift. I'm going to do the stem as well because we get lines in the stem. So I'm just going to work that as well and that will just lift those greens to give it a more natural look. The next area that I'm just going to give a wash of transparent yellow, which probably seems a bit alien, but it isn't, is on the light side, that's the top left side, I'm just going to give the petals a little wash of transparent yellow, just a hint. The reason for this is that when most people look at flowers, it might be a red or a pink flower, but you can see some yellows in there. You can see some a hint of blue, but you cannot mix those colours and put them on in one application. So it's got to be put on very subtle in different applications to bring those colours into play. And this is the way to do it. So we wouldn't get that yellowy colour on the on the shadow side. We'd get that more on the on the light side, where the light source is coming from, which I've said is top left if you're right-handed. So I'm just working these in a little bit. That will just bring everything together. Now, if it's not enough, if it hasn't worked, you can actually do it again. I'm going to put a, another wash of pink just on this side. Some of these veins are standing a little bit too proud. So I'll just give that another wash of the pink. You'll not damage it. You'll not do any harm. You'll only enhance the image. So just, again, just top to bottom. This also works if you have got a little area that you've not quite painted over or you want a touch darker, you can always bring it into play at this stage. Again, just a bit on here. It's a bit too light, so I'll just drop that again. And I could do with a little bit more just on this little bit here where it's a little bit light. So we'll have an extra wash on that as well. Again, keep neat to the edges. And that completes the final stage. There is just one other thing you need to do when it's completely dry, that is to rub out any pencil marks that might be on the edge of your painting. Just rub those out. And that completes the painting of the Nymphia. So there's the water lily finished. Join me in the next programme where we'll be painting a snowdrop.
now available to buy. Try these techniques at home whenever you wish. The extended DVD of today's workshop and the book that accompanies this series are now available from the Painting and Drawing channel. For further information and to order your copy, go to www.paintingdrawingchannel.com.